The novel coronavirus, or SARS-CoV-2, which results in the disease COVID-19, most probably escaped from the virology laboratory in Wuhan, as live bats are not sold at the Wuhan markets, and certainly not the horseshoe bats that carry the SARS virus that live in caves 1,000 kilometers away in southern China. This video is designed to help people understand how the novel coronavirus spreads and how they can best protect themselves and their loved ones. It may also be of use to medical staff dealing with the disease COVID-19 caused by the novel coronavirus. It was established in Wuhan that the virus can spread from human to human, but what people did not know at that time is that a lot of people had no symptoms at all and were still able to infect others. This may be why it took China a month or so to move into serious action. And China did move into serious action. When vision of what was happening in Wuhan was made public, people started boarding planes to return home from China or just to escape China and Wuhan and they carried the virus around the world to almost every corner of the globe. About the only means used to try to identify who was sick was to scan their body temperature at airports which we now know was completely ineffective as more than half of those infected with COVID-19 were asymptomatic or pre-symptomatic. The virus initially spread to Europe, the USA and Australia by air transport. Italy, Spain, France and the United Kingdom were the hardest hit initially with an outcome death rate of around 40%. Their hospitals became overwhelmed and the elderly population in these countries were crucified. It was also obvious that the growth and the spread of the virus was exponential, without any intervention, and doubling was taking place every five days or so. This meant that in no time, hospitals could become overwhelmed and even if one had the capacity to deal with the matter one week, they would still need twice as many hospitals the next week, and twice that again the week after. The only way to cope with this highly infectious virus was to stop people being in contact with each other, and to stop people travelling. To cope with the initial impact of the coronavirus in China, the Chinese built two huge hospitals in the space of just over one week, allowing for tens of thousands of extra patients. Sadly, the USA took very little initial action with President Donald Trump asserting it was nothing more than common flu, as he did not want to close down the USA economy. The virus spread deep into the USA. It immediately became very clear from the action taken by China that the only way to deal with this contagious virus was to eliminate human contact and travel as much as possible. China started what came to be known as lockdowns and border control. Serious epidemiologists agreed that this was the only way to go, but the United Kingdom and Sweden, for example, tried to go for so-called herd immunity. Herd immunity is when enough people are infected. The virus has no one to pass it on to. The UK quickly changed its course when it became apparent that their medical system was becoming overwhelmed. That initial delay by the UK set the path for the UK to have one of the highest death rates in the world per capita. The first way this virus can spread is by direct exchange of viral loads between humans. 
This can occur via droplets. If an infected person coughs or sneezes near someone else, they can transmit the virus. This is why most countries suggested we stay 1.5 or 2 metres away from others, but research has showed that a sneeze can travel up to 7 or 8 metres and leaves the mouth of the infected person at over 200 kilometres per hour. It was initially suggested that only infected people needed to wear masks, but this changed later. This led to the notion of social distancing. If people are far enough from each other, they will not infect each other. Also, if an infected person has the virus on their hands, the virus can be passed on by shaking hands. This is why people were encouraged to wash their hands as often as possible or to use hand sanitizer. New forms of hand shaking were invented, like the Wuhan shoe tap and the elbow tap. The other thing about the coronavirus is that in order for it to enter one's body, it must do so through the mouth, the nose or the eyes. This was another reason why people who were not sick were also encouraged to wash their hands and told to avoid touching their faces. This is no easy task, as most people touch their faces around 15 times an hour. The next way to spread the virus is through indirect contact by leaving the contagion on a surface. Scientists found that the virus could survive on various surfaces for long periods. It could survive on cardboard for 24 hours, in the air for 3 hours, on copper for 4 hours, on plastic for two to three days, on non-porous surfaces, doorknobs, elevator buttons and light switches, etc. for four days and on glass for nine days. This meant that people could also contract the virus by indirect contact. Washing hands regularly was an important part of dealing with this. People were told to wash their hands for 20 seconds or sing happy birthday twice. Cleaning surfaces also became important. This now meant that people had to be careful what they touched. It meant they had to make sure they did not touch their faces too. With an average person touching their face at about 15 times an hour, this was a huge concern. Irrespective of what they touched, they had to be most careful not to touch their faces without washing their hands first. This is because the virus wants to enter into your lungs and the mouth, nose and eyes, to a lesser extent, are its main entry points. But there was more to worry about now, as one also needed to wipe down their groceries after shopping, and maybe even change their clothes after going out as the virus could attach itself to one's clothes. This led to some strange and crazy costumes to prevent becoming infected by the virus. People started using sanitizers to clean their hands and surfaces. The alcohol content of the sanitizer has to be set to at least 70% for it to work. Some people even use bleaches to clean their groceries when they came home, wiping everything. It turns out a weak solution with soap breaks the fatty membrane of the virus, and it is probably the best, cheapest and safest to use. Most countries were using social distancing as a measure to control the spread of the coronavirus, but there was more to come, much worse. The fact that the virus was airborne meant that people who were not sick should also wear masks. Not just that, but it became apparent that the virus was not only airborne, but could linger in the air as an aerosol for anywhere from 20 minutes to four hours, depending on the temperature, humidity and ventilation. 
This meant that everyone had to wear a mask and that the indoors had suddenly become an unsafe place. This meant that places like cafes, restaurants, gyms, schools, offices, lifts, etc. were no longer safe. Transport like on buses and trains were also unsafe, but people could minimise their risk by wearing masks. It is difficult wearing masks in restaurants, cafes and even schools. Masks became necessary so that people would not breathe in the viral aerosol. After all of the anti-lockdown protests and all the Black Lives Matter protests all over the world, there was not a significant increase in the number of people infected. This suggested that the main form of spreading of the virus was through indoor events with aerosols. In fact, if we look back at history, the most infectious events occurred in indoor events like churches, restaurants and offices. There was a cluster of infections from a church gathering in Ohio. 87% of people got infected in a choir in Skagit County, Washington in March 2020. In another experiment, two buses carrying monks. In one bus, no one was infected. Whereas in the second bus, 23 passengers got infected by an asymptomatic person. Super spreading has occurred in a restaurant. A1 was the infected person. He infected people upstream and downstream from the direction of flow of the air conditioner. Mind you, it is now known from another study that virus can even be transmitted between shared rooms by air conditioners. Even up until mid-July 2020, the World Health Organization failed to acknowledge scientists who had claimed that aerosol spread was a significant factor in the spread of COVID-19, actually greater than 50%, and actually the main source of transmission. The World Health Organization at one time also wrongly stated that the chances of catching COVID-19 from an asymptomatic person was rare whereas more than 50% get infected from an asymptomatic people. For a considerable time, the scientific community referred to a person as a possible super spreader. It was thought that some people carried a large viral load and could infect many people, but that is now being turned into thinking that super spreading happens indoors. Dr. George Christos went as far as to say, My hypothesis is this is how super spreading takes place indoors with aerosol. There is no mythical super spreading person. This means inside bars, offices, schools, restaurants, lifts, etc. You need to mask up COVID-19. Indoor aerosol floats in room for 20 minutes to 4 hours. That is when everyone should wear a mask. Don't forget more than 50% infection comes from asymptomatics and they don't have to cough to release aerosol. Just talk. The spread on the bus by an asymptomatic person almost certainly proves his hypothesis. It seems that with aerosols, indoors are not safe at all. This means that schools, offices, restaurants, lifts, etc. are just not safe at all without wearing a mask. And in some cases, it is not even possible to wear a mask. One should especially avoid indoors that are crowded, where people are too close to each other. Ventilation is poor. The time spent in there is too long. People are not wearing masks and singing, shouting or loud speaking is taking place. And what makes this even worse is that asymptomatic people can release the aerosol virus from their mouths just by talking. Yes, just by talking. It is also of great concern 
that many health workers have become infected with the virus. Masks and personal protective equipment, or PPE, needs to be airtight and secure to stop the virus from entering into the healthcare workers' air passages. In the Australian state of Victoria, which recently had a second wave of infections, as of 21st August 2020, 2,563 healthcare workers tested positive for COVID-19. This represents around 14% of the state's 17,683 cases. Most were infected because their masks were not fitted properly or there were gaps in their PPE. Recently, it has also become evident that masks with outlet vents are potentially unsafe as they help spread the virus through the air, especially if an infected person is wearing one, who could also be asymptomatic. It has also been discovered that healthcare workers can become infected when they change their clothes. When they change their clothes, virus particles attached to their clothes, or PPE, can be released into the air and float around for hours like an aerosol. More than 1,100 health workers have died in the USA, so far, as of the end of August 2020. One of the other main problems in dealing with this virus is that there is much misinformation about the virus. Some say it is just flu, that it is a hoax or a conspiracy possibly connected to the new 5G network or organised by the world's rich and powerful to enslave the poor and potentially mark them with a vaccine or even insert a nanochip into them with the vaccine or require people to get vaccination passports to be able to travel. These fallacious theories have gained widespread support as false news spreads six times faster than true. The other problem with the virus is that it seems to potentially kill mostly the elderly or those with comorbidities. Their immune system seems to overreact and causes a so-called cytokine storm event that fills their lungs with fluid. For this reason, many people around the world have not taken the virus seriously and have protested about being locked down. Their complacency has aided the spread of the virus. Children also seem to have some immunity to the virus. This is mainly because children have less ACE2 receptors in their nasal area. These are the receptors the coronavirus likes to attach itself to, to enter a human cell and replicate. The problem is that some children do get infected and can infect others even if asymptomatic. Israel learnt this the hard way when they reopened schools. Even though most young and healthy people who contract the virus do not die, some do die. And we are now discovering that death is not the end game of this virus, which seems to attack most organs in the body, like the respiratory system, the vascular system, the heart, the kidneys, the liver, and even the brain. The real concern is what impact this virus may have on a large proportion of the population over a long period. Will we be left with tens or hundreds of millions of people with organ damage? On the question of wearing masks, they should generally have three layers to keep the virus out because the virus is rather small. Also, masks should be either thrown away after use or carefully washed as the virus attaches itself to the outside of the mask and can survive on that surface for days. Basically, you have to be careful not to touch the outside of the mask. To be complete, we note that toilet plume can contain the virus so avoid public toilets. It is not known as yet, but we suspect that flatus also carries the virus. We do know it occurs in feces, 
as we use sewerage to determine where an outbreak is about to occur. With the virus present, it is difficult, if not impossible, to reopen schools, restaurants, cafes, etc. Indoors, that is. Offices, workplaces, etc. Without going to extraordinary means. Some workplaces in China even have disinfectant tunnels and workers sit far apart to have lunch. Many places around the world also rely on tracking and tracing infected people to try to keep abreast of infections. But all in all, it is not feasible to live with the virus at all. Small businesses that rely on indoor activity will find it too hard to survive. It is hence best to aim for complete elimination of the virus, which has been achieved in many parts of the world, and life is quite normal indeed. This will be the subject of one of our upcoming videos.